I was the seventh employee of the company Hoppen, which during the pandemic grew from zero to over 1,000 employees in just two years. And I was partly responsible for interviewing the senior React developers. I interviewed over 100 of developers and you'd be surprised how many failed this simple question. What is a higher order component? And even more struggled with the follow-up question. Why do higher order components even exist? Did anyone consciously put them into the framework? Hi, I'm Jan, I'm the CTO of React Squad, and if you need to hire senior React developers, click the link in the description now. This video is going to answer both of these questions correctly, and it's going to show you exactly when you want to use higher order components and how they are defined. The basic definition of a higher order component is, it's a function that takes in a component and returns a component. And the React docs say that a higher order component, HOC, is an advanced technique in React for reusing component logic. HOCs are not part of the React API per se. They are a pattern that emerges from React's compositional nature. The theory behind higher order components comes from function composition. In mathematics, function composition is the act of combining two functions or the result and passing the result of one function to another. In JavaScript, this looks like this. Define a function called increment and a function called double. And then you can create a new function called double then inc, which takes in a number and then first applies double and afterwards it increments the number again. This is a form of manual composition. Notice how you can assign the combined functions to a new variable called double then inc, which you can do because JavaScript has first class functions. If you want to learn more about first class functions, click the link below the video, which takes you to the video called use callback versus use memo, which explains first class functions in depth. But in general, first class functions means that in JavaScript, you can assign functions to variables because any function can be used like any value. And you can abstract away the composition that you saw in the previous code example into a function called compose2, which can compose any two functions in mathematical order. You omit the argument x in the definition of double than inc2, which means that the function is defined in a point-free style. And point-free style means you define a function without explicitly mentioning its arguments. If you want to compose more than just two functions, any arbitrary amount of functions, then you can generalize the composition like this. Define a function called compose, which takes in an arbitrary amount of functions and spreads them into an array. Then you can reduce right over the array to then compose them in the reducer function. Now define a function called square, which takes in a number and just returns the square of that number. Then you can compose double then inc3 the same way that you were composing double then inc2 using the compose function, but you can also compose in the square function, so you can compose more than just two functions. More sophisticated versions of the compose function are frequently exposed by libraries that also expose higher order components as part of their API. For example, Redux or Apollo. And if you want to compose functions, you need to make sure that the return values and the arguments of the functions that you want to compose line up. For example, if you have a function that takes in a string and returns an array, you cannot compose that function with another function that takes in a number and returns an object, right? Because no matter how you change and interchange the functions, the return values of the one function never line up with the arguments of the other. Here's an example. So define a function called echo that takes in a value and the number of times that you want to repeat a number. Then define a function called double map that takes an array and doubles every number in that array. Now you can compose both functions to a function echo and double map. And if you now put in the arguments three and four, you get back the number six four times. But if you compose both functions in the other order and apply the double map function first, it will break because you call it with the arguments three and four, which are both numbers and not arrays. So you will get the error, array.map is not a function. Since inc and double both take in numbers and return numbers, you can compose them in any order. Here's what it looks like if you switch the order when you compose inc and double. When you put in the argument three and first double three, you get six and then you increment it, you get seven. But when you first increment three, you get four. So when you double it, you get eight. Additionally, both compose2 and compose are higher order functions because they both take in functions and return functions, which is the formal definition of any higher order function. So here are some examples that shows you what higher order functions look like. Define a function called multiply that 
takes in a multiplier and a multiplicand and then just multiplies the two numbers. And you can use a partial application to create the function double. Then define the function map, which takes in a function and then an array, and then maps over the array using the function. And that allows you to define a function called double map by just partially applying the double function. Lastly, if you take a numbers array and put that into the double map function, you get back every number in that array doubled. From the four functions that we just defined, multiply is a higher order function because when you apply the first number, you return a function. Double is not a higher order function because it just takes in a number and returns a number. The map function again is a higher order function because it takes in a function and then returns a function that takes in an array. And the double map function is not a higher order function again. Now check out that React components are all functions, no matter if they're a class or a function, because class components are just syntactic sugar for constructor functions. In JavaScript, all classes compile to functions. Therefore, since all React components are essentially functions, and you have higher order functions in JavaScript, you get higher order components for free. You should now understand why the React docs say that higher order components are an emerging pattern of the language. And you probably want to see a higher order component. So recall the definition of a higher order component, which is that it's a function that takes in a React component and returns a React component. And in order to write your first React component, your first higher order component, you're going to use test-driven development. So the libraries that you're going to use for that are Vitest and React Testing Library. And the first two requirements that you can capture in your tests are that all higher order components are functions and that they take in a React component and return a React component. So import render and screen from React Testing Library and describe and expect and test from Vitest. And also import your higher order component, but that's just an empty function. Now, if you take your my component and pass it into the my higher order component function, you get your wrapped component. If you render your wrapped component, you can assert that the text that it renders is still in the DOM. This test tests both requirements because you call your higher order component, which automatically checks that it is a function, and you try to render the result, which automatically checks that it is a valid React component. Notice that testing something like type of function or that the React component has some certain React properties is redundant because you should write your unit tests in a way where the type checks are implicitly done and when you're using something like TypeScript, you don't need to explicitly check for types in your unit tests. You can make your tests pass by creating the following implementation. All your tests should pass now and your test results should look something like this. Currently, your higher order component does nothing. But in general, higher order components excel at abstracting away styling or logic. So if you find yourself repeating certain common patterns or logic like JSX in your components, then you might want to reach for a higher order component to abstract those things away. So the thing that we can do with your higher order component now is to turn it into a layout component. Let's start by writing the tests for that. And in the tests, we're going to make sure that your component renders a header and a footer around the component that you're wrapping. For this test, what we're going to do is we're going to add a second test to our previous tests. And in this test, we're checking that if the higher order component is given a component, then we are rendering a layout. So we're making sure that there's a heading in the DOM, we're making sure that there's a main content in the DOM, and we're making sure that there's a content info in the DOM, which is really the footer. Now, in true TDD fashion, watch your test fail, then create the layout component that you're later going to use in your higher order component. Define a component called layout that just takes in children and then renders some title in a header and renders the children in the main block and finally a footer with some text. How you handle layouts varies depending on the framework that you're using. For example, if you're using React Native, then something that makes sense in your higher order component for your layout is wrapping everything in a safe area of view to handle the notch on iOS devices. In a framework like Remix, it wouldn't make sense to handle your layout through a higher order component because Remix exposes an API that lets you handle your layout globally. Now, make your test pass by using your layout in your higher order component. So in your higher order component, modify it to now import the layout and then wrap your component in the layout too, but also add another function call to it. Your tests should both pass now.
Notice how your with layout component now takes in a component, a rec component, and returns a function. Because before this change, it wasn't even a real higher order component, because it was just taking in a component and returning it. But the essential thing about a higher order component, right, is that it returns a rec component, and every function is a rec component, so it only now became a higher order component. And this is actually the most common misconception that people have when you ask them the question, what is a higher order component? They say often that a higher order component is a rec component that takes in another component as a prop, but that is not true. They are probably thinking of something like this. You define a component called not a higher order component that takes in a component as children and then renders that component. And then in your app you would use the not a higher order component component and pass in the my component as a prop. What you see here is a rec component that takes in another rec component as a prop. But that is not a higher order component, remember, right? Because higher order components are functions, so you cannot render a higher order component. Your with layout hook actually contains a bug. Can you spot it? If not, that's fine. The following test exposes the error for you. To make sure that your props are being passed through, define a custom title and pass it into the wrap component. Now you can expect that the custom title is rendered correctly on screen. Your new test fails. The test exposes a problem. Your higher order component fails to pass on the props to its wrapped component. And you can make that test pass by passing on the props that your higher order component receives. Modify your component to take in the props and spread them into the wrapped component. Now your test passes because your higher order component actually passes on its props to its wrapped component. The abstraction capabilities of higher order components wouldn't be as useful if they didn't have another key feature. Eric Elliott describes it like this. The primary benefit of higher order components is not what they enable. There are other ways to do it. It is how they compose together at the page root level. So the key to using higher order components is knowing how and when to use them and when to compose them. So you can write a test that shows you how you can compose higher order components like this. To test if your component composes correctly, you can define the compose function that you saw earlier in this video, which just composes functions in mathematical order. And then you define a with title higher order component, you compose the two, and you make sure that the title is being correctly passed through, that is being injected by the with title higher order component. This test already passes because your higher order component is already correct. In your test you compose the with title higher order component with your with layout higher order component and the with title higher order component takes a title and injects it into the wrapped component. Now for the finally of this video showing you how you can configure higher order components and for some real world examples follow me to another location where we wrap everything up. It is common for higher order components to be configurable. For example, the connect higher order component from Redux takes in a map state to props object, a map dispatch to props object, and a merge props object, and all of these are passed in before you wrap the component. So let's assume for your layout, you want to be able to show and hide the header based on a props. Here's how you need to modify your layout component. Modify your layout to take in the second prop, other than the children, which is called show header, and conditionally render the header based on whether this prop is true or false. Now modify your tests and add a test that checks that your higher order component can take in a configuration object that allows you to configure the header. But you also need to modify your existing test to also accommodate for this change. You modify every single test by calling the with layout function without any configuration object because we will provided a default configuration object, and then you add a last test that makes sure that if you add a configuration object with the show header property set to false, the heading is actually not being shown. Watch all your tests fail because your higher order component still lacks the support for the configuration object. Here's how you need to modify your component to make the tests pass. Modify your higher order component to take in a show header prop that is defaulted to true, and then pass that show header prop to your layout component. To answer the question of when you want to use higher order components, remember what I told you earlier. Higher order components are excellent at abstracting away common logic and then you can use the different higher order components and compose them, for example, at the page root level. I know that this makes a lot more sense when you see a real world example, so here we go. Here's a sign-in container that composes multiple hooks for a sign-in form. In this real world example, we are importing several higher order components from different libraries, such as Formic, React Redux, and React Router. 
Then we're defining initial form values and we're defining a maps data props object. Now we define a form config object because both the connect hook and the withforming hook take in configuration object. Notice how you can also inline the composition by just exposing your compose function applied on your sign in component. In this example, you're composing three higher order components. The with router higher order component from React Navigation that allows you to switch between pages after successful sign in. The connect higher order component from Redux, which allows you to inject the sign in action creator as well as the is loading prop. And the with formic higher order component. Formic can be used for form validation and handling local state. Sometimes you have a component that has static properties that need to be copied over, such as default props or get initial props from Next.js. To solve that, you can use a higher order higher order component that takes in a higher order component and returns a higher order component called hoist statics, and it looks like this. To create the hoist statics higher order higher order component, import the hoist non react statics object. Then configure it so that it takes in a higher order component and then a component and then it hoists the statics of the wrapped component and returns the wrapped component. Other than treating static properties special, you also need to pay special attention to refs. So when you're dealing with refs, you might want to use a hook instead of a higher order component. The last thing that we want to talk about here is higher order component composition. When you're composing higher order components, you need to pay special attention to the order in which you compose them. Because one higher order component might inject some props that another higher order component depends on. So here's what I mean. If you have two different higher order components, with title and with formatted title, the with formatted title component depends on the with title component. So if you compose them with the with title component first, then your app breaks. But if you compose it with your with title component second, then your app works. If you switch the order of higher order components in the real world example that you saw earlier, it will break too. Because the with formic higher order component depends on the history object injected by the with router higher order component and it depends on the sign in action creator injected by the connect higher order component. In general, if higher order components implicitly depend on each other, that might be a code smell. In that cases, it could be better to explicitly inject those dependencies by importing them into your component or by passing them into the configuration object of your higher order component. In general, if a dependency is used by most of your pages, it is okay to put it as an implicit dependency into your higher order components, such as, for example, the store provider from Redux. Thank you so much for watching. I love you very much. And if you learned something, subscribe now.